Our job in 3D graphics is to convince the viewer that what they're looking at is real. We're modern day magicians, just with a whole lot of tech and computing power. But the tech and the power alone won't cut it, so let's take a look at a few tips to convince your viewers that your visuals are real. The most obvious giveaway that an image is 3D is it looks too perfect. And in this image you can see that the pictures, chairs and tables are all dead straight. And there's no way you could really do this in reality even if you tried. So what I think we should do is turn off snaps and we'll go to rotate. And what we're going to do is just rotate everything very slightly. And it can be whatever you want, nothing too crazy, just a little subtle. And we're also going to move these chairs in and out just a tiny bit. And I'm going to do the same on the table, just a slight rotation. And the same with these pictures. I'm just going to slightly move these around and put very slight rotations on them. And I'll just quickly run an interactive render to see what we've done. Okay, this was our original image and this is the image we worked on and it's all very, very subtle, but these are the kind of subconscious things that your mind will pick up on when you're looking at renderings. If you want to explore this more, then check out the physics video where we're going to look at stacking objects using gravity and wind and explosions to randomize the placement of objects. So using the same model is cool and all, but when you have a few of these lined up, you're going to start noticing that they are exactly the same. And in this example, we can see that the wood grain is going to repeat. And if say you have like five of these chairs lined up, you're going to really notice that these are exactly the same wood grains on each chair. So this can easily be solved even if the objects are instanced. So if we go into our material browser, which is M on the keyboard, select our wood material. What we want to use is a V-Ray UVW randomizer and these will plug into V-Ray bitmaps. So what I'm going to do is plug this into all of the wood textures and then we can randomize by name. And what this is going to do is offset the wood depending on the name. And something else I want to do is change the UV rotation to zero as I don't want it rotating. I just want it offsetting left and right and up and down, which we can do in the U and the V. So now if we render, we can see that the wood grain on each of the chairs are actually different. Another giveaway that something is 3D is the hard edges. When we build in 3D, our edges are hard by default. And we can overcome this a couple of ways. Number one is the chamfer modifier, which you can find in the modifier list. And we can just add that to our object. And let's just bring that amount down to like 0.1 and add two segments. And we can see what difference that makes already in making that feel less CGI. So the second way to do this is by using a material. So let's delete the chamfer modifier. So let's open up our material editor, grab the eyedropper tool, select our material, and then I'm just going to right click, go to V-Ray, and we want a V-Ray edge text, which is here. And you can see it's got rounded corners, and all we're going to do is plug that into our bump, and I'll start the interactive render. So there is our chamfer versus our material. So there's not a lot in it at all, but compared to our original, it's much better. So nothing in life is really flat, so nor should your models. And to add some variation, you can use a noise modifier. And to use that, we're actually gonna wanna add some more quads to our mesh. So to do that, we can just add the quadrify mesh, and that's gonna add some more quads to our tabletop. So we can make more of these and then all we need to do is add a noise modifier on top and I'm going to change the strength to half a centimetre. You can already see that moving around and if we bring the scale down it's going to make it more and more varied. So let's just put that on 50%. So try not to overdo this one. You don't even want to notice it like all of these. They want to be very subtle. So maybe even 0.25. So this is without our noise and this is with it. Here's the scene we started with and here's the scene we finished with. If you want to download this scene file or any of the other ones we're going to start using, then check out the link in the description. You should also find some free Chaos Cloud credits in there. And if you like this video, then like this video.